So now we're going to zoom in and look at the direct pathway and explore the issues of regularities and exceptions. And conveniently, we're looking at English, which has a very complicated mapping between writing and pronunciation. And so uh, here's an example, the word bint or bint. Which way do you pronounce it? It depends uh, on which kind of uh, regularity you're emphasizing. Mint, hint are all pronounced with a short I. Mind, find are pronounced with a long I. And the D uh, versus the T, the voiced versus unvoiced final consonant, uh, seems to be a regularity. But on the other hand, there's always pint. Um, and so there's all these kind of complicated sub-rules, partial regularities, context-dependent regularities, and they kind of stretch the sense, uh, the extent to which you would consider these to be rules. Uh, and so this uh, is really an ideal situation for a neural network model that, you know, just has a mapping between uh, combinations of letters and pronunciation, and it can handle and, in fact, you know, very naturally deals with these whole subset of rules and partial rules and all these other kind of graded levels of regularity. And there's another uh, very important way of thinking about what's going on here, which has to do with the bag of words that we were talking about or the bag of letters that we were talking about, which is that there's also you need to, in addition to having kind of context dependence in the nature of the way the vowel is pronounced, you also have to uh, have some invariance where you pronounce, for example, the letter B, B is pronounced the same way, pretty much regardless of where it shows up. So you need some sort of mix of regularity, independent kind of pronunciation of individual letters, in addition to the ability to take into account the context around the letter. And this is very much like object recognition, which has this ability to recognize letters and process letters kind of or, or objects independent of their spatial location, but also can allow uh, different degrees of feature integration and complexity. And so we're actually going to take our model that we used in the object recognition chapter and apply it to this word recognition problem, this word pronunciation problem. And so we're going to present words in different locations on the input. And then we're going to expect that uh, the intermediate layers, like we saw in the object recognition model, will develop some features that are independent, where you recognize letters independent of the context, but also combinations of letters that allow you to pick up on that relevant context. And in uh, some initial early work on this field, uh, Mark Seidenberg and Jay McClelland and colleagues developed models that had these kind of features built in, uh, different kind of combinations of letters on the input. And what we're going to see is that this kind of uh, learning property of invariant object recognition develops those features automatically and will uh, enable the network to pronounce regular words quite well. And then critically, we test the model on non-words, which are super fun. So you get to see how the model itself pronounces b-i-n-t and whether it says bint or bint um, and then there's a lot of really interesting other non-words that's kind of a fun uh, space here like voice versus choice uh, both spelled strangely one sounds like a real word and these are these kind of pseudo homophones and you might think that in fact if you pronounce something like a similar a familiar word you can uh, you will do better at that and indeed when you look at the homophones compared to the controls they do much better uh, and in our model we actually see the same kind of effect uh, and interestingly in the existing models in the literature that don't have the bi-directional connectivity they don't serve this effect so this is something where we can kind of address some further data uh, in general, though, if you look at this table, our model using this object recognition paradigm does quite uh, similarly to what people do in, in this set of comparable lists of non-words. Here is the network. As usual, we train the model using uh, minus phase, plus phase, error-driven learning, presenting the 
uh, written form of the word on the orthographic layer, and then the pronunciation on the phonological layer. And this layer is where we actually use those detailed phonological features that we talked about with voicing and you know manner of pronunciation, dentals and uh, plosives and all that kind of stuff for the consonants and then place of uh, tongue location and manner of open versus closed, etc. for the vowels. And as in our previous model, we have the vowels kind of in the middle. So everything's a three consonant repeated lead up vowel centered and then three consonant in the in the coda and uh, we also move the input across the orthographic layer so the words can show up in any of the different locations where it's possible to see them and that's really important for developing the object recognition invariant object recognition property of the network where uh, it encourages the network to if possible, learn to pronounce letters in an invariant way um, while also having access to the relevant context information. Okay, now we're going to test the model. We're loaded, loading the weights and presenting the first test item. And you can see the uh, item here, best, as it says down there at the bottom, is presented in the leftmost position. And activity quickly flows up and activates the appropriate output pronunciation and this latter part of the output down here is actually telling us what it should have pronounced uh, and we can compare that so it's b -b best uh, with these repeated consonants and as you can see next we move the uh, input across to the next location so you can see all the different spatial locations and that allows us to see how consistent the pronunciation is across different locations. This is a corpus of regular English words that have been organized according to different frequencies. And it allows us to look at the reaction time. In theory, the reaction time should be systematically faster for regular words, slower for irregular words, faster for high frequency, slower for low frequency. We get some of those effects, but not all of them. And uh, there's further work to be done to ex investigate uh, the reaction time. Probably there's an important role for the basal ganglia in integrating some of these signals and producing uh, more realistic reaction time effects. Select these different non-words here and test it and look at these testing results. And it records uh, whenever errors are made. And so it does make a few errors, as you can see, Performance is not perfect in that table. Um, and you can look at the results in the test error log, test trial log. And this tells you kind of how the network responded for each of the different locations for each of the different uh, non-words. So in general, it does a pretty good job of pronouncing these non-words, indicating that the knowledge that it's encoded is actually systematic, regular kind of rule-like uh, knowledge about how to pronounce these words and it's also able to deal with all these kind of complexities and subregularities that are present in the English language and, and again because the behavior is very similar to overall human performance we think that it's capturing something about how we implicitly learn essentially to map between written word forms and phonemes. In summary this gives us a good idea about why it is that the direct pathway in the overall triangle model is able to pronounce non-words accurately by learning these regularities in the mapping between letters and phonemes.